The science of addiction shows that within this time frame, our brain begins to heal. This person's prefrontal cortex, the intelligent, the critical thinking, executive function, well, that part of the brain is being rebuilt. We have members in Project 90, one in particular, who was experiencing a moment of crisis, a moment of crisis that was so intense that he, in fact, reached out to our team at Alcohol Free Lifestyle. I spoke with this member, and when he answered the phone, he sounded very stressed, very anxious. This person is 85 days into the program and has been a wonderful member, very active, very engaged, very committed to this process. And so at 85 days, he was having a moment of crisis and alcohol in the past would have been his default. He shared with me that he is experiencing what he perceives, and I think he, we can all understand this, what he perceives as an exercise in futility. He is dealing with something we all love to deal with. He is dealing with bureaucracy. And if you've ever had to deal with this sort of stuff, which we all have, whether it's the DMV or something bigger, the court system, um, you all can understand the feeling of banging your head against a wall and how frustrating that can be. Now, if you are a person who has struggled with alcohol, it makes sense that those sorts of things may be triggering. Those sorts of things may bring up feelings or beliefs that you need a drink. So let's talk about, the, about that for a moment. 85 days in, why in the world would this person think about drinking? If you've heard our podcasts about how addiction is formed, you've learned that. And if you haven't learned it, that's okay. We're, we dive very deeply into this in Project 90. But in a nutshell, when we drink alcohol, especially under certain circumstances, such as stress, grief, loss, trauma, our brain learns that this is what we do to stay safe. We drink alcohol because it numbs us from experiencing it is an anesthetic. We are anesthetized. These neural pathways are formed with repetition and they become quite strong. They're pretty deep and they're pretty deep. They run deep. And so when these things happen, a stressful event comes up and this person has committed to an alcohol-free lifestyle. What we learn about in Project 90 is that instead of shaming ourselves, if the thought of alcohol comes up, instead of saying, what is wrong with you, you loser, you're 85 days in, you should have power over this. You should not have a craving. We go the opposite way because those old thoughts and beliefs kept getting us drunk, didn't they? Maybe you're in a situation where you're trying to stop and you keep going back to it. And that sort of language about yourself to yourself is coming up. You're not a loser. The brain has learned this behavior. The brain will not unlearn this behavior. Those neural pathways, actually, someone asked me the other day, so are we repairing those neural pathways that have formed this addiction, this dependence, this habit? I said, no. You're not changing the neural pathways. You're building new ones. And I'll talk more about that in a second. And so this, this member in the past would have experienced these feelings of frustration, futility, lack of worth, right? Nobody likes it when, we, when, when, when they are not seen and heard. And 
he would have gone to pick up a drink. Why didn't he? Well, lots of reasons. He's got a community around him. He has coaches. He has connection and he has accountability. Meaning if he were to drink, he would need to talk about it and go through it with the group. And there's no shame in that, but it's not pleasant because when you join Project 90, I'll say to you, or one of the other coaches will say to you, you, your brain will tell you that you need a drink. You don't. You need something, but it's not a drink. And so this gentleman has been with us long enough that he has practiced for the event that occurred today. He came into the community. He made friends. He became vulnerable. He opened up. He shared. He's let them in a little bit to his life. And so he has begun the building. He has laid the foundation, not to repair the addiction pathways, but to build new ones. And so isn't that the most empowering thing? Now, what's happened in his brain? Well, when you are in the cycle of drinking, your actions are very much driven by your amygdala. That is the fight or flight part of the brain. And so if you've ever experienced that, that if you've ever, pardon me, whew, Maui brain, if you've ever been going through your day, experienced triggers, and the next thing you know, you're three drinks in, it's the amygdala. Because your brain gets hit with these triggers. Uh-oh, danger, time to drink. And the amygdala goes into overdrive. And before you know it, you're there and you're drinking and you're like, how, how did I even get here? What happened? I'm just sitting here drinking. Whew. Yes, I remember those days. That's where the member was when he came into the program. Flash forward 85 days. The science of addiction shows that within this time frame, our brain begins to heal. And so this person's brain has begun to heal, meaning his prefrontal cortex, the intelligent, the, the, the critical thinking, executive function, think of it as the angel on your shoulder part of your brain, the one that talks you, talks, leads you in the right direction. Well, that part of the brain is being rebuilt because drinking literally shrinks the gray and white matter in our brain, literally shrinks it. You lose prefrontal cortex volume from drinking. So let's play this out. He was extremely triggered. And those learned behaviors, I'm in trouble, I'm in danger, time to drink. His prefrontal cortex said, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's practice the pause. Let's step back for a second. And that makes all the difference because instead of going to a drink, his prefrontal cortex said, you have other stuff. You have other tools. What, what's available to you right now? And he chose to reach out. He is also going to post about this experience in the Marco Polo group and in the forum, which is another community platform that we have. And so instead of getting drunk and depleting his energy, ruining his sleep and waking up stuck in the amygdala again, because that's what happens when we drink continuously over time, we are very amygdala driven. Um, he made a different choice. 